Hi everyone, my name is Colleen Drozdek. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and it's April 2020. And I'm here today for, to present the topic of Whole Foods 101. Why and how to eat more whole foods. So let's get started with what is a whole food? Well, foods, whole foods are typically uh, foods that are found in nature. So you want to think of things like apples, sweet potatoes, whole chicken, eggs, almonds, broccoli, avocados, dried beans, and more. Uh, another way to look at it too is if it's a plant, it should have all or most of its parts. So olives versus olive oil. Now olive oil is, is, a, is definitely a healthy oil for us to use. Um, however, in regards to being a whole food, an olive, which is just an olive, and it doesn't have to be processed, um, versus olive oil, which is minimally processed, you know, that would be the difference. Same thing with a whole orange versus orange juice. A whole orange has fiber, all of its parts, it just comes as an orange. Orange juice, it's just the juice. So we lack that fiber, which um, is a very important part of the whole fruit and has health benefits. And lastly, on a food label, the only ingredient listed should be the actual food itself, making it the whole food. An example of this is um, I found at Costco, so some wild Alaskan sockeye salmon. Now, this food is essentially a minimally, minimally processed because it is cut and vacuum sealed for freshness. So they don't have to add any preservatives to it. Um, however, if you look at the ingredients list, it's just sockeye salmon. So it's one ingredient, the actual food itself. So again, a good example of a whole food that's minimally processed, however, still definitely great for us. So why should we eat more whole foods? So unprocessed or minimally processed foods contain more naturally occurring vitamins, minerals, fiber, and phytonutrients than highly processed foods. So these are all really good benefits to our body. Um, also, whole foods do take longer to digest, so that could help with blood sugar regulation, that can increase our satiety and decrease our intake as well. So this is very important to remember in regards to whole foods and processed foods and those benefits. I also wanted to mention how processed foods are not only more costly for your wallet, but they can negatively impact the environment as well. So it is important to consider the economic and environmental toll that the processing of food takes. And um, in terms of the environment, we want to think of things like water, electricity, uh, plastic packaging, or even cardboard packaging. You know, any type of packaging of food, that's more waste that we're generating. So really, processed foods in, increase the use of, of our resources. So again, important things to consider when eating uh, whole foods versus processed foods. This next slide is a handout um, that I have, and I'm actually, you're going to be provided with a checklist of these foods to help potentially get more colors and uh, vegetables and fruits, as well as some other foods that are listed on the bottom um, that are, are very good for us um, into our diet. But what I wanted to mention on this page is um, talk about some phytonutrients in foods. So a diet that is rich in phytonutrients and phytochemicals so when I say that, I talk about the color of the fruit, the hue, the flavor, the scent. That's the phytonutrients and phytochemicals that give food those properties. Um, they may actually help to prevent disease. And so these foods actually have health-promoting properties. And you'll see them listed, the slide's a little blurry, but you can see them listed, the benefits on, on the right side of, of the document. And so on the other side, we have the different the variety of colors and the different fruits, vegetables, as well as some other things such as on the bottom, if we look at the white, tan, and brown group, 
We see things like cocoa and coconut and coffee in legumes, uh, nuts uh, and seeds as well, and whole grains even, uh, tea, soy. So again, there are other foods that do contain uh, some phytonutrients. Um, but I also, you know, I want to mention these benefits that eating a variety of these foods and a variety of colors, um, what they provide benefit-wise. And some of those benefits can be reducing your risk of cancer, um, perhaps reducing inflammation, um, benefiting heart health, immune health, and more. So again, eating a variety of colors, fruits, veggies, and some of those other foods I mentioned uh, just before can really be beneficial to the body. So definitely a good idea to incorporate these throughout the week. If not, do a variety of colors daily. Next, I wanted to talk about how food is information for our cells. And an example of that is food can actually promote or decrease inflammation throughout the body. And in fact, it affects our genetic material, which can upregulate or downregulate certain genes. And this upregulating or downregulating of genes actually can affect our overall health. So again, going back to the example of uh, promoting or decreasing inflammation, um, this can actually be, a, uh, inflammation, I should say, can be a driver of many chronic diseases, such as coronary artery disease, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's. So again, we know that there's that relationship there. So important to remember how food can actually affect our health overall. And I also wanted to provide some examples of highly processed foods versus uh, highly processed foods that promote inflammation versus foods that decrease inflammation. And just to provide a few examples, so inflammation promoters what I think of, I would go to things like, uh, potentially, if we eat a lot of these things, uh, like things like Cheetos or Doritos or any of those quick grabbing foods out of the cupboard um, that involve pretty much no cooking usually at all, um, you know, can be one a way to look at it. Um, processed meats potentially too, uh, so things like lunch meats or a lot of uh, bacon, things like that. Um, or highly processed refined vegetable oils, such as soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil. Again, these things are highly processed, so they can actually promote inflammation in the body. Whereas foods that fight inflammation include things like berries and cherries and salmon, trout, sardines, nuts and seeds, a variety of herbs and spices, so things like basil, rosemary, cilantro, parsley, thyme, oregano, uh, cumin, uh, turmeric, and also things like olives, olive oils, beans, vegetables, again, all foods that actually help to fight inflammation um, rather than promote inflammation. So now let's discuss some easy first steps to incorporating more whole foods. So step one, choose unprocessed or minimally processed foods most of the time. We're not looking for perfection here. In fact, even 80% of the time, if we can eat less processed foods, that's, that's awesome. Um, and so definitely something to keep in mind also is that there is a spectrum of food processing. Uh, processed foods are really anything that is cooked, canned, frozen, packaged, fortified, prepared, preserved. So again, it, it's, it's a spectrum. Um, and so it does not mean it is bad technically if it's processed. It just really comes down to these three things. How it was processed, how much it was processed, and what ingredients were added? So before I get in, before I get into the rest of the slide, I just want to give a, a quick example, um, and, and that would be something like pre-chopped and frozen vegetables, which are a great time saver. They have some minimal processing there. They've been chopped, right? Um, 
I believe they're even cooked and then they're flash frozen. Um, so th they're actually they're actually picked and and um prior like they're picked sooner and actually frozen and actually have more of those vitamins and minerals, those nutrients than fresh foods that if fresh foods just sit out. So, which actually would uh, end up containing potentially less nutrients over time. They would lose that as much the vitamins and minerals that they have over time if they sit out longer. Whereas frozen vegetables, they're picked and they're frozen. So they retain those nutrients. So just remembering that, you know, both are great uh, for sure. And frozen veggies are actually much easier to keep long term. So I'm a big fan of frozen veggies as well as fresh veggies, as long as I can use up those fresh, fresh, fresh vegetables and not let them go bad. Um, but with frozen vegetables, be aware of added sauces um, that, they, that they add, um, which can be a higher in sugar, potentially salt, as well as some um, unhealthy fats. Fresh foods, like I said, are great. Um, just make sure we use them and don't let them, you know, go to waste in our in our um, in our fridges as well. And um, frozen, like I said, are fine. Check those ingredients. Canned foods are fine. Check the ingredients again. Um, and so we'll kind of dive into the slide a little bit. I wanted to give that example of steel cut oats versus instant oats. So it's just a matter of the instant oats are a little bit more processed and the steel cut oats are less. So in terms of health benefits and how they, for example, affect our blood sugars, um, the steel cut oats would be a better option. And they take more time to cook. So thinking of it that way, um, since they take more time to cook, we know that they're actually less processed. Um, dried beans versus canned baked beans. So canned baked beans actually tend to have more sugars, more uh, preservatives added to it. Dried beans are just beans. We can cook them in a crock pot, cook them on the stove, and then you got yourself some beans. Add some herbs and spices to it. So again, there is processing when we cook, but the difference being we're not adding sugar and preservatives and things like that. Um, and let's skip over to some homemade pizza versus store-bought pizza. We have a lot more control when we make our own pizza of what, what, what goes into it, right? So we can either make our own dough or perhaps buy a store-bought store dough if we wanted to, check the ingredients. And then, you know, put a little bit of sauce on it. Um, you know, we could get a sauce that's mainly made with whole foods, um, some herbs and spices, add as much cheese as we want, want to it, add some veggies to it. If you wanted to add a little bit of other toppings to it, you know, you have complete control over what you're putting on your pizza. So again, it is, can definitely be much better versus store-bought, which will have more ingredients and more preservatives, potentially additives as well. Um, olives versus refined oil is another example that I gave earlier. Um, edamame versus products with soy protein isolate. Edamame is a whole food soy product that has great health benefits versus soy protein isolate, which yes, has protein, but it doesn't have those, have those same health benefits as edamame. And another one I wanted to mention too on the bottom is strawberries versus strawberry flavored fruit snacks. Big difference there. Uh, strawberries full of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, fiber, versus that strawberry flavored fruit snack, which is pretty much probably some fruit juice. You got added sugars in there um, and lacks fiber. And it's not filling, right? So again, thinking of it that way, whole foods are even more filling than those processed foods that we have. So step two, pay attention to the ingredients listed on packaged foods. So you, you know, the first thing I always kind of start out with, off with is in general, you should be able to understand or pronounce the ingredients listed. The only thing I will say about that though is if a product is fortified with vitamins and minerals, meaning they've put vitamins and minerals into it, you might not be able to pronounce or understand those. And, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that the product is bad. Um, it's just that you might not be you know, familiar with those words. So again, being aware of that. But in general, I like to know what's in my food um, and, 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 and 
and being able to pronounce the words is very important to me. Um, so typically, the less ingredients, the better. And I'm going to go over to my example that I have here of Triscuits. Um, so ingredients, whole grain wheat, canola oil, sea salt. Not many ingredients. I can pronounce all of those. I know what those are, right? So again, it's a processed food, but it's less, it's minimally, it has less ingredients. It's not as processed as, let's say, I keep using the example of like Doritos or Cheetos or something that has many different ingredients and probably some, um, you know, uh, words in there that we don't quite understand. Um, next to the ingredients are listed in descending order in regards to the amount contained within the product. So I know here that these crackers, the first ingredient is whole grain wheat. So it is mainly made of whole grain wheat. So again, definitely um, it's important to me to know that that's the main, main ingredient in there. Canola oil is next, so they put some oil in it and sea salt. So again, not a ton of ingredients. Um, and I can understand them all. The ingredients list can also indicate if the product may contain more fiber. So I personally know that whole grain wheat means the product likely has more fiber than, let's say, enriched wheat or just wheat. So again, I, I can kind of, that gives me a clue that, oh, this has more fiber. You can also check the nutrition label that will have fiber listed and how many grams. So step three, balance meals using whole foods. So this is one of my favorite handouts to use um, with individuals to help them to start eating more a more balanced diet, and especially with whole foods. So this is called the Bastier Healthy Plate. And what we typically will tell, uh, what I'll typically tell uh, some individuals I work with is that you know, we have a plate about nine inches, and the first thing I always like to suggest is making half your plate non-starchy vegetables. And so if we look where it says vegetables, um, it says fill your plate with a variety of raw and cooked vegetables. Include at least one green vegetable in one other color of vegetable with every single meal. So I love the examples they provide. So we got some carrots, some eggplant. Uh, we have leafy greens in there, pea pods, garlic, cauliflower, asparagus, all great things. And then next to it, you'll see a little portion, about an eighth of it, of the plate. Um, we have something called digestives in there. So those are foods that actually contain probiotics, which are bacteria that are good for our, our gut health. And so uh, these fermented foods include sauerkraut, yogurt, miso, tempeh, um, apple cider vinegar with mother, um, and, th and things like that. So again, a good thing to add as well um, to support our overall gut health. On the next side of the plate, we have a quarter set aside for proteins. So making a quarter of your plate proteins is very important and totally a good idea. Um, we have listed here some proteins such as legumes, nuts and seeds, and also um, animal proteins like fish, poultry, eggs, dairy. I'll even put lean beef in there, uh, things like that. So again, making that a quarter of your plate at least is definitely a good idea. Um, the other quarter of your plate, making that whole grains and starches. So when we're going to do that, though, making sure that those whole grains, and we're going to get into this on the, I believe it's the next slide. Um, including high fiber whole grains is the key. So things such as brown rice, quinoa, oats, and if you, you know, you do breads, 100% whole wheat breads and pastas, or starchy veggies like sweet potatoes and squash. The main thing here though we want to recognize is to limit refined grains such as white rice, white breads and pastas, and things like that. Um, in the middle of the plate, we have our healthy fats, which I personally love to talk about healthy fats. So um, we have listed here avocado, an excellent, um, it's like a fruit fat that we can add to our diet, whether we add to our salads or smoothies, um, very, very good thing to have. Um, nuts and seeds as well, and fatty fish. So 
um, you can either do, we can, we can include healthy fats in our diet in a variety of ways. It could be maybe how we, where we saute our vegetables in, um, in healthy fats like avocado oil or uh, olive oil. Um, or perhaps um, we want to, ha we have fatty fish, so that actually covers protein and healthy fat. Um, and that's fine too. Or nuts and seeds. So if we have a snack of some, like a handful of nuts, we're potentially making some chia seed pudding. Um, these are all great ways to get in some healthy fats, which are very important to include in our diet. Um, on the side there, we have some fruit. So a lot of times I recommend fruit um, as part of a snack or perhaps a healthy dessert choice. That's definitely a great idea. Um, a lot of times with kids, um, you know, recommending um, maybe a little bit of veggies and, and some more of the fruits we focus on just because it's sweeter and a little bit, uh, you know, easier to get kids to eat fruits. Um, and then we have water as well. Super important um, to include adequate water throughout our day. Um, yeah, can't stress that enough. Staying hydrated. So again, this is a nice um, way to help balance your meal and really get in those whole foods. So I wanted to go into just a little bit more detail about the different areas of the plate. So we have our minimally processed protein sources. So that was that quarter of the plate that I mentioned. So both animal and plant-based protein sources provide important nutrients and support health. Um, on our one side here, we have our animal proteins, which I, I touched on just before. So fish, chicken and turkey, lean beef, eggs, dairy, and you know, having those in a variety of ways. So we can bake our fish. Sometimes we can grill our fish. We can poach fish. Um, even some smoked salmon here and there, totally fine. Um, chicken and turkey, we could do a variety of things with that. Uh, put it in our crock pot, bake it, again, grill it, um, so many different things. And then um, lean beef, I, I know I like to include some lean beef into my diet. Um, again, I usually making tacos, that could be a great thing to do, or making some burgers. Uh, eggs, having some scrambled eggs in the morning or hard-boiled eggs as a snack. And dairy. Um, one of my favorites is actually plain Greek yogurt. I like to dress it up with some fruit, um, maybe some nuts. So again, um, a variety of things you can do with animal proteins. And definitely a good thing, you know, if you eat um, animal-based foods um, into your diet. Plant-based proteins are also something to not forget about. So things like lentils and beans, which are high in fiber and vitamins and minerals, and phytonutrients as well. Uh, soy foods such as edamame, tempeh, and tofu. Variety of things you can do with that. Um, I always love to have edamame in my freezer. I love to uh, boil it or steam it, and then I add some salt, a little bit of salt to it, and sesame oil, and we got a nice, great plant-based protein there. And nuts and nut butters, you can have those as snacks, I said, like I said, or um, adding them to smoothies is another good idea. Uh, there's a variety of things you can do. I know I bake with nut butters a lot too. Um, and seeds. One of my favorites is chia seed pudding or adding hemp seeds to smoothies or cereals or any anything like that. Uh, baking. So a variety of way you can, ways that you can use these proteins. And it's also good to get in a variety of proteins as well. So next we have whole grains and starches, which was the other quarter of our plate. Um, whole grains and starches are a great source of fiber, vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. So on the one side here, I have the whole grains, and you might not be as familiar with some of these. So things like whole barley or rolled and steel cut oats, uh, farro or bulgur or quinoa. And quinoa is actually a seed, or it's, it's a pseudo grain, so it's actually a seed. However, um, you know, it's a great source. It has some, has some protein in there. It has uh, good uh, fiber, vitamins, minerals, like I've said. So definitely a good one to try out. Uh, brown and wild rice. And then we, of course, also included our 100% whole wheat products. Um, the one thing I want to mention with the whole grains, uh, besides the 100% whole wheat products, is some of these involve cooking. Actually, all of those involve cooking. 
So, you know, sometimes cooking them ahead of time during the week um, or for the whole for the whole week, um, you know, that can be a really a, a good thing to do. You can even freeze it. I've, free, I've uh, frozen my uh, whole grains before as well. Um, farro is one I use in my house a lot. Um, an example of a meal I have with that is uh, farro, and then we do salmon, uh, salmon cakes, and some steamed veggies. Uh, but these are all like uh, whole kernel grains, which are really good for us to try. And um, on the other side, we have some whole food starches. So things like sweet potatoes and potatoes. Um, I, we love sweet potatoes in my house. We roast them with our, our Sunday meal where we grill out typically. Um, acorn and butternut squash, you can make some delicious butternut squash soup. Beans and lentils, again, they, got, they have protein and carbohydrate. So that's why they're included in here as well. But another great whole food starch. And then parsnips or rutabaga. Um, parsnips, I've made parsnip fries before and they're very delicious. And some plantains as well. So there's a variety of whole grains and starches that we can incorporate that uh, into our diet that provide, like I said, fiber, vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. So whole fruits and vegetables. Um, as I said before, I always recommend at least half our plate be veggies. We can also get some whole fruits in there, um, whether it be snacks or desserts or maybe a little bit with our meals if we desire that too. Um, and fruits and vegetables are a great source of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and phytonutrients that support health by reducing risk of various diseases. And always make sure to choose a variety of colors. If I can't stress that, but there's one thing I can't stress enough, getting enough of these uh, fruits and veggies in and a variety of the colors. So for fruits, I want to start with, um, you know, a general portion size recommendation. Everybody's different. However, in general, maybe one to two cups per day could, could be a good, could be good for most people. Um, one of my favorite uh, fruits, uh, berries. Love berries, super high in antioxidants, uh, fiber, vitamins, minerals. So we have blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. And actually, I love to buy these frozen and just defrost them a little bit and actually eat them, um, you know, as my morning fruit um, or, or potentially in a smoothie as well. So again, definitely very versatile. Also, we have some apples and peaches and oranges and plums some for great for snacks, uh, pineapple, kiwis, and grapes, bananas, pears, papaya, mango, again, a variety of colors, which is really, really important to incorporate into our day, into our week as well. Um, Non-starchy vegetables, so portion size of two to three cups or more per day. We cannot get enough non-starchy vegetables into our day. So um, I always love to start with those leafy greens or those green veggies. Um, so or cruciferous veggies is another word for some of these as well. So things like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, um, and various types of lettuce. Definitely good to incorporate. Um, eggplant, peppers, garlic, onion. I love to throw garlic and onion into everything. So again, definitely, um, you know, a very useful thing to have in our house at all the time. Um, I love to use them in stir fries and even throw them in with the crock pot and things like that. Um, and stir frying them up with maybe some peppers and some eggplant too. Um, or make eggplant parmesan. That's another thing that I've done before as well. Uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, celery, some good for, uh, those would be good for some maybe raw, raw, raw uh, vegetable snacks. And uh, green beans, arugula, and asparagus. Again, some more veggies to try. And, um, you know, um, arugula, you know, adding that to your other leafy greens or asparagus, steaming it um, or grilling it. And green beans. I love steamed green beans. So, again, cooking these uh, veggies in a variety of ways and, you know, to see how you like them. And the more we can eat per day, the better. And the more colors per day, uh, the more colorful we can make our selection, the better. Uh, lastly is healthy fats. So healthy fats provide essential nutrients, promote satiety, and can actually help reduce inflammation. And so some of these I wanted to touch on are avocados, nuts and seeds, fatty fish, coconut, olives, all great whole food fats. 
So for avocados, you know, incorporating them uh, into our salads, perhaps into our smoothies. Um, nuts and seeds, I went over that before. Um, coconut um, into trail mixes, I've done that before as well. Um, and oils to try for cooking and baking. The main oils I typically recommend are things like olive oil, avocado oil. Avocado oil, more for the high heat cooking. Olive oil, uh, more for like a light saute. Uh, coconut oil uh, for baking. And oils to try for dressings. Uh, sesame oil is a good one, as well as olive oil. So I also wanted to provide some balanced meal examples. So here we have some breakfast, lunch, and dinner options. And you will be getting some um, handouts too that um, talk about, you know, some there's be some recipes in there. I know there's an overnight oats one um, and like a hummus that we did. So definitely check those out, a mason jar salad. So we'll start with breakfast here. Um, one of my absolute favorites is scrambled whole eggs with spinach, onion, uh, maybe some avocado if I have some, and roasted sweet potatoes from the night before if we roasted some. So uh, definitely, you know, getting a lot of those a lot of nutrient dense, a lot of colors in there. Um, for lunch, uh, perhaps a mason jar salad. I know that's a great one to bring to work um, and, and that's, it's very easy to do. So we'll have a, a recipe for you, a recipe handout for you on that as well. Um, and then some dinner options I have listed. Of course, I threw my homemade pizzas in there as I talked about before and I love to add a side salad to that. Um, as well as uh, tacos are probably one of the most versatile dinners and the easiest. So you could do a shredded chicken in a crock pot or if you have some black beans and then, you know, uh, you can uh, saute up some bell peppers, zucchini, onion. You can buy um, definitely the bell peppers and onions even frozen. Saute them up in some avocado oil and, you know, that, that can be a great way to make some tacos. So again, there are varieties of, of balanced meal options, and I just have some listed here to get you started with some ideas. And having they also have a variety of colors in them as well, too, which is great. So step four, plan ahead. So I always recommend to all of my patients who are you know trying to eat better to really start by planning and prepping meals for just even two to three days out of the week. And at first, you really want to keep it simple and plan and prep for the meal that you tend to struggle with the most. So whether that be breakfast, lunch, or dinner, just pick one and then maybe just pick, you know, two days out of the week, you're, you're going to actually plan it ahead and go from there. Um, the next is to search for a few easy recipes to try. So maybe starting with some crock pot meals or maybe one pan skillet meals, or perhaps if you have an Instant Pot. I love the Instant Pot. I love to put my frozen salmon in there. That can be a very easy meal to make. Um, and some recipes can be found at um, eatingwell.com, as well as um, our website I'll have listed, and in our blog we do have a variety of recipes too to check out. Um, after that, go through your cupboard and refrigerator to search for any ingredients that you have on hand. Because that, again, if you have it on hand, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to go out and buy it at the grocery store. So after you search and, and you find what you already have, make a grocery list. I always have a grocery list every time I go to the grocery store. So we don't buy more than we need. And also make sure that we're actually getting everything we do need. Lastly, purchase items and prep by chopping vegetables on the weekend or on a weekday morning cooking any grains or beans in bulk for the week, cooking extra meat to use in another meal, one of my favorites is shredded chicken in a crock pot, or pre-making sauces and more. And a lot of these things you can actually freeze also. So again, just planning ahead, definitely important to help you to eat healthier um, and really make those good food choices. Now I want to end by considering your current intake of whole foods. So let's think about these. So within the past month, I have tried the following minimally processed proteins. So take a look at, this, at these um, uh, foods that are listed and maybe 
think about potentially, you know, how many you tend to eat. You probably tend to eat the most similar things. Like you probably rotate between similar things. Maybe try something new in the next one or two weeks. Uh, if you've never had edamame, get some frozen edamame and give it a try. Or perhaps make some chia seed pudding. Also, uh, within the past month, I have tried the following whole grains or starches. So again, I'm pretty sure a lot of people haven't um, had, or at least in my experience, things like farro, maybe hulled barley or bulgur. Um, so again, giving one of those a try, maybe some parsnip. And lastly, how many half cup portions of fruit do you have in a typical day? So, you know, thinking about that and saying, oh, well, if I only have one half cup portion, maybe I should have one more. I should try to have one more a day. Also, um, how many half cup portions of vegetables do you have in a typical day? So again, thinking about that and saying, well, if I only have about maybe a half cup here, a half cup there, maybe I'll try for one more. And using this as a way to help increase the amount of fruits and veggies you get in daily or maybe even start with the week. Say, I maybe only have vegetables a few times a week. Let's add one more, one more half cup serving and start from there. Again, working over, it's progress, not perfection, and working over time. And I just wanted to end by saying thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this webinar. And um, please come check out our website at uh, www.sounddietitians.com um, and on that website feel free to check out um, our blog for any nutrition related information, recipes, or you can also reach out to us by phone if you'd like as well. And I also wanted to give a big thank you to our sponsors, Verdant Health Commission and Stilly Valley Health Connections. And um, definitely consider checking out, if, if you liked this webinar and you enjoyed the topic, Consider checking out the event calendars for either of our sponsors, where community classes are held on a variety of topics, including whole food, whole food eating. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it, and take care.